So here are the realities of dropshipping coming from someone that has done multiple seven figures in sales with dropshipping and recently built a brand from zero to over $3 million in sales in the last 10 months. So whenever you make a big claim, you need to be able to back it all up. So as you guys can see here, we're inside of the Shopify dashboard. This is not a screenshot. I'll very quickly refresh so you guys can see. Just yesterday, we ended the day at $16,000 in sales, and this is only on Shopify. This is not including any of our other sales channels. So if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Juan Valdez and I've been in the e-commerce space since 2017. And my goal is to help educate as much as you guys I can. I see you guys out there hustling, getting started in e-commerce, trying out drop shipping, trying out TikTok, and, and I'm pumped, right? But I want to be able to help you guys save time, energy, and efforts by avoiding some of the mistakes that I've made along the way. So the first thing I want to start off with is one of the main things that everybody talks about in the space is the OG or original strategy of doing product research narrowing down to a handful of products and testing you know those products to see if you can actually get any results and get any sales and once you find one of those products that actually is consistent with sales and actually works you then focus on you know trying to do as much volume as you can with sales and you know really running the product until it's no longer profitable and then redoing that process again and so I personally also you know fell into the same process right I used the same strategy actually very quickly I was able to generate over two hundred thousand dollars selling women's push-up bras my third month into drop shipping. And I, know, I wish I could say that that lasted a while, but after my fourth and fifth month, the store actually very quickly died down and I had to start again from scratch. And I basically just found myself going over this never ending cycle of doing product research, testing products, finding winning product, running that product for a few months, and then having that product die down and then having to restart over and over and over again. And obviously if you're just getting started, there's no problems with that. But one of the biggest learning lessons I've had is actually, shortly after I shut down that store when I was selling the push-up bras I met these guys that were actually selling the same exact bra at a much higher price point and they were doing three times the volume that I was doing and you know one of the main le learning lessons that I got from them is the only way you can stand out and build a sustainable long-term business in this space is by actually pivoting once you have a product that sells into building a brand and so you know since I met these guys and I got to know everything about you know how they go about e-commerce that's what completely changed the game for me and I think that for you guys that are just getting started that's going to be a game changer because basically what happens is if you don't pivot you'll continue to stay in that never-ending cycle and you'll never be able to be anything that has any longevity and so you know the same time energy effort and resources that goes into that cycle that we just spoke about you can put into actually a product that will actually have a lot more long-term benefits and that will actually um, be a long-term sustainable business and so that's one of the first things I, I wanted to cover right because it is something that's very common, right? Everybody talks about how you have to find the, the hot product or these are the products you have to be selling, but nobody talks about what to do after you find a winning product, right? And I think that for me, if I had somebody to tell me this earlier on, I would be a lot more further along in my career, right? And so just wanted to make sure I kind of shed some light on that because it was something that was a game changer for me once I actually learned about the process of pivoting and building actual brands instead of only drop shipping. So that's one of the first things I wanted to cover. The next thing is, I know when it comes to finding products, everybody talks about how you need to find a problem solving product or a product that has this wow factor. Now, don't get me wrong, problem solving products are great. Products that have the wow factor are great as well, but those are not the only products you can sell. I I actually know uh, somebody that sells these political products like political t-shirts, sweaters, coffee mugs, all to specific political fan people. And that's his niche. His only demographic actually is going after people that are enthusiasts about politics. And he basically, you know, obviously with politics, you have the like, different seasons, different people running for election and things like that. And he basically has his whole business built around politics. And uh, it's actually pretty interesting because one of the ways that he advertises is by running ads, placement ads on different political and news websites. And that's how he actually gets all his sales. And so the reason I wanted to mention that is because, you know, in my opinion, you have three different categories of products. You have passionate products, you have perishable products, you have 
problem solving products. And from my experience, that's where there's been the most opportunity, at least for me. And I think you guys can actually find the same opportunities within those as well. And so, yeah, I just wanted to shed some light on that briefly because I wanted to make sure that, you know, now with all the opportunities that there are out there to sell these different products and how you can actually get products in front of people, you know, you want to keep your mind open and really expand across the main types of products that everybody goes after. The problem solving products and the products with the wow factors are products that have a lot of competition. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with competition, but if you can find any competitive edge when choosing the right products, you know, it's going to help you, right? And it's going to be in your favor. Now, the next thing I wanted to go over is drop shipping is not easy at all. I know you have people out here that are making these crazy claims on like how you can build a store in five minutes and you can instantly start selling selling these products. I'm going to be straight with you guys. I've been in this space for a very long time. It's not that easy. Now, there are a lot of things that now do make the whole process of selling online and drop shipping a lot easier. Like now you have things like TikTok, TikTok shop, which is super cutting edge and does make everything else easier, but it is not all glamour and fun and like it, it's a grind, right? That's what it really comes down to. You're going to need to be sharp with everything that you do when it comes to drop shipping. And the reason why is because it's a low barrier to entry opportunity within e-commerce. So as you guys know, within e-commerce, you have different levels, right? You have drop shipping, which is like has the again, the very barrier to entry level to actually get started. Then you have things like private labeling, white labeling, brand building. And so since you're just getting started with e with drop shipping, you need to keep that in mind that you're not coming into something that's just like a breeze and a walk around the park. Like, yes, you're going to see people getting results. But if you're just getting started, you need to make sure that you're coming in with the right mindset so that you don't give up before you actually get results. It's not realistic that you're going to come in and your second weekend, you're going to instantly start generating sales like that may happen for some people, but that's not how it is for everybody. I think what's more realistic is understanding that you're coming into an opportunity that it's going to take you some time to learn how how to do product research, how to advertise products, how to actually scale and, you know, actually uh, get help when you're actually building an actual product or you decide to pivot and build a brand if you decide to do that. These are learning lessons that will be invaluable. If you can get drop shipping down, you know, there's a lot more opportunity that comes your way because then you can learn how to build a brand around the product. You can then learn to work with like other businesses, leveraging your skills to help them. And so there's so much opportunity, but again, you want to make sure you have the right mindset coming in and you understand that this is not going to be some get rich quick scheme like everybody kind of makes it seem. And so, yeah, obviously wanted to shed some light on there. Um, the next thing I wanted to cover is everybody talks about how you should instantly run ads on Meta or run ads on TikTok. And I think that those are great. And now one of the more popular topics is like TikTok organic drop shipping, which I'm a huge fan of, right? We actually leveraged that within the most recent brand that I just shared with you guys at the beginning of the video. And it definitely works. There is no doubt about it. But I also wanted to shed some light on the fact that there are other marketing channels that are overlooked. And if you can capitalize on these channels, you can benefit from them, right? Here you can see we're inside of this Google ads account. And you can see that in the last 30 days, we have spent $80,000, we've generated $300,000, and we're getting a 3.62 return on our ad spend. These are not typical results, but this is the kind of opportunity that's available to you if you leverage other marketing channels. It's not realistic to instantly come in and like get really good results on every single platform, right? Like Meta, there's a lot of competition. TikTok, there's a lot of competition. But Google is actually one of those channels where there's competition, but not as much compared to these other channels, right? Because it's overlooked by a lot of people and it's a very high intent channel. When anybody goes to Google to look for a product, they're already ready to buy. They're just looking where to buy from. As long as you can make sure to show up at the right place at the right time with the right messaging with your ads, you can capture existing traffic that's coming in with high intent to buy the, the product that you're offering. And so one of the things that we actually do and that you can leverage as well is whenever we find, this was more so specifically for dropshipping, whenever we see a product that's actually doing well, um, specifically going viral either on TikTok or Instagram, what you can actually do is go on Google. And if you see that this competitor is going viral with their product, you can actually target the name of their website or their brand. You can actually capture traffic from them and their current virality. And again, this is something that very underutilized, very overlooked. And the results are there. Actually, Google is one of my favorite channels. It's a consistent channel that has always delivered results since I've started leveraging Google ads back in 2018. And so um, obviously wanted to kind of share that with you guys, because I know that everybody's currently talking about about, you know, TikTok ads, organic TikTok dropshipping, which again, like I said, those are very effective and I leverage both, right? I actually leverage all channels. I leverage Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, if it's applicable, Google, as you guys can see, YouTube. And so there's so many channels, but I wanted to 
shed light on Google specifically because it is a high intent channel that can definitely work for you guys. Now, the next thing I wanted to cover is there are many hurdles that are often overlooked. When it comes to dropshipping, there's gonna be many ups and downs that you're gonna go through. One of the first issues I ran into with dropshipping is having payments withheld. So for example, you know, one of my very first stores when I was actually selling these push-up bras, I very quickly scaled, right? We went from selling a few hundred dollars a day to again, second month in doing over $200,000 in sales. And that month we ran into the first issue, right? We had $20,000 in sales withheld by PayPal PayPal, and that was catastrophic for us, right? To run the business, specifically with drop shipping, you're depending on that cash flow for for ad and to fulfill orders. And so there are many issues that nobody sheds light on um, when it comes to drop shipping, right? Things like having issues with payments being withheld, having suppliers not deliver products that are actually the, as good quality as they promised, the chargebacks and how that affects your payment processing, right? And so I wanted to take some time to share just some of these hurdles that I've personally gone through so that when they happen to you, you're, you're prepared, right? These are things that are completely normal because with drop shipping, a lot of payment processors are not big fans of drop shipping because they know that it's a risky business model. A lot of scams happen. Not everybody comes in and actually delivers product. They just basically take in all the cash and run off with it, right? Now, obviously you do also have people that do drop shipping the legit way, but because of this, you wanna come in being prepared, right? You wanna make sure that you understand that this is a possibility. Once you actually find a winning product, you do have the possibility of having issues with having payments withheld, right? When when you're a new business and you come in to let's say PayPal and you start processing a lot of payments very quickly, they automatically actually put a reserve on your payments most of the time because they see you as high risk. They don't know if you're actually gonna be delivering on the products. And so obviously wanted to shed some light on that. There are many other issues and hurdles that will come across like getting ad accounts shut down, getting other people duplicating your website and you having to send out notices to get their websites taken down. And so overall, there's obviously a lot more that I can't fit into this video, but I did want to try to my best to share as much insights on you know, of course, some of the wins and some of the losses as well and some of the hurdles that I kind of gone through myself. So yeah, I mean, hopefully overall, this has been helpful for you guys. The overall goal for me is to help out as much as you guys as I can and maybe even work with you guys along the way, right? My main focus right now is working with different brands and helping them grow and scale. And so the only purpose that I have with putting out this content is to really help you guys out, whether you're just getting started or you're already running an e-commerce brand, you know, helping you get to that next level. So that's pretty much it for this video as usual if you guys got any value from this video i'd appreciate it if you dropped a like and if you want to see more content just like this make sure you subscribe to the channel and with that being said i'll see you guys in the next video peace